Well, good evening, my friends, and welcome to another Sports Report show with my friend Gary Patterson and I. Uh, and I'm Bill Crane, in case you uh, had missed that. Um, Gary, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. I'll bet we do, Bill. We do, indeed. Uh, first of all, the salary report. Okay. Yes. Uh, by the way, you did remarkably well with uh, Brandon Browner. Remember at the last show, you said he'll probably grab five million a year for three years. Yeah. Eighteen mil over three. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised, um, especially a team that's also to be generous about it. Rebuilding New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, if someone paid that and they needed to shore up their secondary for a real honest-to-goodness run, um, you know, at the Super Bowl or at least at uh, their division championship or something like that. I can see them spending that on Browner. But boy, oh boy, I don't know about the Saints. Well, you know, I think that's the market for Browner, right? Browner's market, some people thought he would actually get $7 million a year. And, you know, I was personally surprised that the Patriots didn't, ex didn't go ahead and exercise that option for 4.8. Yeah. And trade him. Yeah, there were a number of teams after him. Um, Four point eight was a very almost a below market Whoa. number for that, that guy. That, that's a workable number. And if you don't want him, trade him for a third but or fourth know, round I, pick. <clears throat> Belichick is smart, the smartest man in the world. I'm convinced of it. <laughs> he could have figured that out. I think he. I think he's even surprised at this number, because if he thought he could sign Browner and um, lock him up and then parcel them off for a couple of draft choices or something, um, I, I think he would have done it. Unless it has something to do with the cap. Does the cap money hang around? Well, they would have had a cap penalty if they traded him. Yeah, yeah. That would have been the signing bonus. But it wouldn't, if it was only the one-year deal, they would have had that cap hit anyway. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I was uh, surprised. They just let him go. Okay. But that's what they do. They do, yeah. Now, um, Danny Amendola. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to suggest he's in the bread line begging for food. No, he's but not. But he, uh, he took a shot. Uh, one year, 2015, he's at 1.75. And that figures out, really, to uh, 1.25 salary and $500,000 uh, signing bonus. Right. So the cap drop on him is from 5.7 down to 3.1. Now, he is signed for $5 million in 2016. Yeah, you won't see $6 that. $6 million in 2017. You don't think he ought to go out and buy a couple of houses no, or I don't anything think so. based he, on that? Yeah, I wouldn't take that to the bank. Yeah, I don't think so. I think this, is, uh, uh, this little redo is probably one and out. Or if he's willing to settle for another... 1.75 or something. Yeah. But that's that's his market. That's where he's at. I think so. Yeah. And he's worth it. He, he's he, worth he it. He's definitely worth it. He, uh, and he, he's a decent kick returner. Yeah. No, uh, nothing, I think he had, what, one little one that wasn't a touchdown, though. Was maybe 75 or 80 yards. Right. And they got dragged down from behind. Um, and he's a backup uh, punt returner. And... Uh, uh, what, number four receiver? Yeah. Yeah. Good depth player. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, the one that boggles my mind here, Johnny Boychuk. Johnny Boychuk, yeah. Seven years. Just got rich. 42 mil. Right. At the age of 31. Right. That's like them signing you and I. Yeah, NHL contracts, they do that. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, this guy, you really and truly expect him to be a top-flight defenseman at the age of 38? I don't think so, because he plays too darn hard. And he spends plenty of time on the old injured list. Right. Yeah. You wonder I mean, if there's a buyout in there, though, do you think? No. No buyout. I don't think so. Seven guaranteed seven, years. Oh, yeah, the hockey's a seven guaranteed. Yeah. Now... Supposing after two years they say, oh, boy, Chuck, what did we do here? I think they can buy him out for like 60 cents on the dollar. Okay. One fell swoop, the whole thing. 
They can't prorate it over the years. Yeah. It's going to be a lump, and I think Hits their ap cap. after a couple more years, it's like 75 cents on the dollar, it hmm. seems to me. But there is a way out of this. But, you know, um, well, we'll get into the Bruins in a minute. But, boy, oh, boy, Johnny Boychuk um, seems to me to be one of the real missing links Absolutely. on that club. Yeah. I mean, he was so strong in the dressing room, um, and... Uh, him and Aginla, it seems to me, uh, because Chara is a, a very European type of leader, strong, silent type. Yep. Uh, you, you know, the kids up in Canada uh, play junior hockey, and they learn leadership, and the captaincy really means something yep. uh, in junior hockey, you know? These kids live and breathe hockey. I know it's uh You get that with terrible. Bergeron. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, with who, please? Bergeron. Oh, Bergeron. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the Bruins have had them through the years too. Terry O'Reilly uh, <laughs> comes to mind yeah. immediately as a prototypical captain. But uh, and Boychuk would have made a great captain here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I really do. They should have put uh, or Ginla, but that's. Uh, that ship has sailed. Right, and if they had signed him last year instead of waiting, uh, they wouldn't have had to go 7-42 and 42 to keep him here, right? Absolutely right. They probably could have got him for 4 and yeah. 18 or something. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, and they never replaced him. I mean, that's the big thing. Players move on. That's one thing you got to say about Belichick, right? I mean, he, yeah, he finds them. Players move on, but he's got, he, how he has a plan behind them. He always does. And yeah. We didn't yeah. really see that with Red the Red Hour <laughs> back in Carnage. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever fooled Red. He always no. had a plan. You bet he did. Boy, he was. Um, what a character. We could spend a whole show on him. Oh, he was the best. Well, he says it. Um, I was stopped by a fellow who said, How come you guys never talk about the Celtics? All right. So, whoever you were, because I forget who it was, I don't think I know. <laughs> Here's the Celtics report. Uh, okay. Okay, right into the point. Celtics report. I like Evan Turner, but he's too hot and cold. I like Ray Crowder. He's my favorite uh, Celtic. Yep. I like Brandon ba Bass. Tyler Zeller, mm, okay against certain teams, hot and cold again. Everybody speaks very glowingly about Brad Stevens. The team is fun to watch. There you go. You happy? Yeah. You, had, you get a Celtics report. The future is the future is bright. The future is bright. Yeah, yes. I believe that. Yes, it is. They got some good young players. They need those centerpieces, but they've made the moves. They've what got is the, Smart going to evolve into? He's going to evolve into an all-star caliber point guard. Point guard, not off guard. I think no? he'll play the point. Wow. Uh, his defense is all-star already. I'll Absolutely. tell you, man, does he got quick hands? You look at these three guards they have now that they got Isaiah Thomas. I like it. I mean, yeah. Now, uh, they're going to get better. Yeah. Bradley has taken a nice step up this year. He's become a much more consistent scorer. Well, uh, well let's have four guards. Presley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a kid learning, and uh, he's not all bad. He goes out there and does some pretty good things. Yep. Hustles. He really works. All right. Boy, how about that? And they for got Celtic? cap space. How about that for Celtic stock? Yeah, huh? good, good Celtic stock, yeah. Uh, okay. The green will rise again. <laughs> this one will be the easiest one to do. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I came up with a love hate montage. The Patriots. I'll start with hate first because the traffic problems. But I don't hate it because I don't go to the games, really. Right, okay. Uh, and sometimes Coach B's drafts are hard to fathom. But you know what? Yeah. It all kind of comes out in the wash, though. Uh, but Well, I, you know, he's the best coach in the league. There's no question. I still at times question his general manager acumen and think sometimes Bill the coach overcomes 
build a general manager. Acumen, that's a good word. Yeah. That's about a $12 word, <laughs> folks, at home. Look it up. It's a good one. Um, but you're right. Um, he, I mean, he's had some draft choices that I just kind of want. Been terrible. They, like they wandered off the reservation, you know? We sat here, I think it was five or six years ago, and they had all these draft picks coming up. Mm -hmm. And we thought, here's the fulfillment of the dynasty because we have all these seconds and a couple of years with multiple firsts. And we kept trading away from players that went on trading to become all pros. Down. Trading down, yeah. trading down. He and then his pick, uh, picks in the secondary were... Abysmal, quite frankly, Atrocious. right? Uh, for two or three years in a row, yeah. he probably invested six or seven first, second, or third round picks. And he came away with Devin McCourty. Yeah. That's about it. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum. <laughs> yeah. Then he stuck in his uh, thumb a few more times and got rats. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. But to love about the Patriots, professionalism of Kraft and Belichick. I mean, they're just top shelf yep. kind of people. Uh, jumping Jehoshaphat, uh, you know, through all of this deflate gate and all this nonsense, they've both pretty well kept their cool when they could have, I think, flown off the handle a little bit and said, look, yeah. That's enough of this crap. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Or either that or get out of my face about that stuff, you know. But they never have. It's, it's as though they're above it. And I think they both feel probably pretty comfortably that it's going to go away. It'll be pu a puff of smoke in the It'll, dead of yeah. the night, and that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, it should be. Yeah. Do you think Woody Johnson is going to get penalized for tampering? I mean... And that was about as blatant as you could possibly get. And about yeah. as stupid as you could possibly get. Yeah. I actually think he is going to get penalized. And he may have further aggravated the league a little bit by filing that ridiculous tampering charge against Bob Kraft, which was just the most ridiculous, petty <laughs> nonsense. nonsense. So if you look back at some of the other uh, tampering incidents in the past and what was awarded, they were much more benign than what Johnson did. Yeah. So. I mean, cheap as creepers. I mean, he came right out and said it. But um, I also don't think they're going to give the page, cut the Patriots too much of a break. I don't think so either. In, in fact, if it ends up with uh, us sending them a four and getting a, their three. That would be, I don't think we're going to get that. You don't think it'll be that good? No, no. Okay. Maybe a swap of fourth rounders. Maybe we don't have a fifth rounder. Yeah, right but, now, but but we have, we pick. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. They they, they pick much higher in the fourth round yeah, than we do. Yeah, they have the sixth spot in the draft yeah. this year. We have the thirty second, right? Yeah, so it well, could be swapping around. It'd be great if they did the second or third round. Yeah, I, I don't well, think I, they will. I don't see I that happening maybe either. Maybe the but, fourth. But by the way, I mean, this calls for a wrap on the numbers. Yeah, I think they're going to get something for it. Yeah. I really do. And then we'll probably draft some bozo that can't play, and Johnson will laugh all the way to the bank. Well, you got the other ones, too. that I, I, They have to resolve this before the draft because they need to do something about the other two. The thing with, what was it, uh, Kansas City? Was it Kansas City or Washington? That had Their GM was calling down to the sidelines during the game. Which oh, was, that was uh, the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns, yeah. okay. Yeah, they've got to resolve that. That's clear cut. Yeah, I mean, but um, he said, I wasn't, I, I was... Uh, 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 sort of like, uh, well, hooray, that was a great call. Right. Yeah, yeah, give me a break. So that'll probably end up costing them a fifth round or a sixth uh, round pick yeah. or something. It, right. it, and it should. Yeah. I mean, if you have rules in place, guess what? you got to abide by them. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, don't hesitate to blow the whistle on the pats. No, they don't. No, they don't. And did they fine us for uh, camera gate or what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the success of the team. You gotta love the success of the team. Yeah. You're in, you're out. Uh, they define the course and they stick to it. Mm -hmm. There's no deviation. We have a game plan. This is a business plan. <clears throat> this is how we approach things. And they have Tom Brady. And they get T. Brady. <laughs> That's right. That helps. The plan might not work quite as well if they didn't have that guy named Brady. Yeah, it would be considerably less, I think. <laughs> Unless it was uh, uh, 
Well, well, one of the, uh, let's see, Aaron Rodgers, perhaps. Right, maybe, would, yeah. He would, he, I think he'd fit in here. He all would. Right, yeah. Um, they have a solid approach to all aspects of that operation. They have an excellent stadium and their auxiliary facilities around. You know, I think we've pretty much gotten away from going <clears throat> to training camps. Yeah. It's all being done now in your own facility, and all the facilities have beefed up to be able to accept that. Uh, you know, it wasn't a bad deal for uh, a team from down south to go up to Minnesota right. uh, for training camp. It made a lot of sense, especially in the days when, you know, a lot of places weren't air-conditioned as well as they could have been. And, um, but, and it gave the guys, too. I, I think going away like that gives the guys a chance to concentrate on football more. They don't have to go right. home at night. Yeah, they're all together. Yeah. Team building. I mean, I'm all for the family and all of that, but you need, uh, you know, three or four weeks to really right. gun in on football. Yeah. Uh, the brilliance of Coach B, uh, the Patriot way. Yeah. And um, I just have this one additional. Uh, Belichick should be named director of the CIA by the new president in 2016. <laughs> he can keep a secret, I'll tell you. You know, I cut this out because it, yeah, that, it, I think adding Chandler is great. going to be terrific. a really good move. He's a veteran. Well. He's huge. Uh, what a red zone addition this is. Been around. He's 29. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's smart. I don't think they're going to have to explain the playbook to him more than once. No. Um, and he's never had anybody really great like, move. like Brady to uh, throw into him. And the Patriots, if given their druthers, they would like to involve the tight ends more than uh, they they you know, have. Um, but uh, our boy uh, uh, decided to get involved in a murder trial, and that sort of ended the two. Uh, yeah. I just uh, don't get Rex Ryan, though. I, he he lets Chandler go so that he can overpay Charles Clay. Please. I mean, I mean he really overpaid the guy who's... Chandler has been more accomplished than... Charles Clay. And then when you add to the fact that you got rid of Chandler so that he could go land with the Patriots, yeah, this how does this make sense? It doesn't for make sense. Buffalo? And he's going to be a pound, pound the ground. That's, that's it. Well, yeah. Uh, gee, what? I don't well, think Charles Clay's known as a blocker. No. Uh, I don't understand uh, how you're really going to uh, move your team without a quarterback. Right. Uh, I mean, we're going to go with E.J. Manuel again? or Now, now you know, I like well, him down at Florida now, right? State. Pardon? Yeah, they have Matt Castle now. Oh, yeah. Well, they're building, you see. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I think that, uh, I think they'll be better, Buffalo. Yeah, I oh, I they, do, too. They certainly went in the right direction last year. Yeah. But, boy, oh, boy, if you don't have yourself a top-flight quarterback, it's a tough Tough road to hoe up that mountain to, to the top. I don't think it's going to work for him. No. Um, I did also want to, on football, mention the uh, death of uh, Chuck Bidnarik. Yeah. Uh, some of my early memories of watching him on football and uh, him wiping out Frank Gifford with something. Yeah, that's right. And that's Because that, that's, that's what we had. That's what we had in those days was the New York Giants. Yeah. Every single the New York game. football Giants. And you yeah. became a Giants fan whether you liked it or not. Yeah, you didn't have any choice if you no. wanted to watch football. No, and I did enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, it, it was fun. We got some they, Eagles they, games too in those days, right? Yeah. Phil, Philadelphia Eagles, yeah. And Bednarik, uh, just a couple of things about him. Uh, he died of um, dementia at the age of 89. And one of his daughters mentions, you know, it was football related and stuff like that. But an awful lot of guys die of dementia at 89. Yeah. Not positive. But I guess he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. That's not necessarily a, a football. Injury. But no. anyway, I'm nitpicking here. Um, played 14 years in the National Football League, went both ways. Right. Center and linebacker. Amazing. Missed three games in 14 years. That's something. They miss, uh, they miss days now for heavens. I have a headache, coach. 
Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know, Coach. Getting out of bed this morning, I twisted my ankle. How many concussions do you think that guy had? <laughs> Boy. Um, Benaric was the last NFL starter to go both ways, yeah, offense and defense. And he, and def, he wasn't until Dion Sanders did it in a few games that someone else did it. And Benaric said, the positions I played every play, I was making contact, not like that Dion Sanders. <laughs> he couldn't tackle my wife. He's back there dancing out there instead of hitting. <laughs> that sounds just like him. Yes, yeah. And you know, just to put the icing on the cake, born in 1925, uh, went in the service, flew 30 combat missions over Germany as a gunner on a bomber. Now, I got to tell you something. Those guys were tough that did that. Um, yeah, I admire that because my dad was actually a, on a bomber. Yeah. They were shot down. He was a POW for the really? last two years of the war. Yeah. Wow. In Germany. Yeah. Yep. It's not like one. Well, lucky in Germany rather than Japan. Yeah. Because the Germans uh, took care of our uh, They actually our did. Guys. They treated them fine. Yep. And uh, just didn't have any food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was part that, of they, it. Yeah. They never touched them. Yep. And, uh, but the Japs. That was another story. Yeah. High mortality rate among POWs over there. And when they got a flyer, <clears throat> they usually beheaded them uh, in front of every all the other POWs. Yeah. Uh, uh, guys it, like that that built the league. That's right. Yeah. Built our country. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, came out, uh, played center for Penn for four years, drafted, all NFL as a center, all NFL as a linebacker. Wow. But anyway. Um, so God, anyway. God bless him. God bless him and rest in peace, Chuck. Yep. Um, well, <clears throat> the Red Sox. The Red Sox. It's that time of year. The snow's melting. Yeah. I uh, make sure we get through the Red Sox because I want to get to the Bruins. There's oh, plenty, boy. Plenty of hate in the Bruins. Yeah. Uh, plenty uh, to go around. Things I love about the Red Sox. The tradition, the history of the Sox. The fans, intelligent, enthusiastic. Yep. Uh, the Red Sox experience going into Fenway Park. and It's like going to a museum sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the aggressive Cuban signings. I think that's smart. Um, they have a chance to evaluate these guys as adults. Uh, rather than as 18-year-old as in the draft. Mm -hmm. And um, they can put them through their paces. Yeah. And um, they've got pretty close to a finished product. Uh, like Castillo should, should play regularly this year. Now, the 19-year-old they signed, the Moncada, he's got a couple of years down in the minors, but that's fine, too. Um, the... Uh, Jerry, Remy, and Don Arcello. Oh, yeah. Great game coverage. Uh -huh. I love them both. They work well together. They yeah. absolutely, they play each other like violins. Yeah. Uh, and the Eck and Jim Rice. I love the Eck. Yep. Yeah. And I love Jim Rice. Uh, Do you? Yeah. He, Not a Jim Rice fan. No? But oh, no. As an announcer, no. Yeah, He's I met him at an autograph show. Did you? Yeah, it was slow. And I got to tell you, he was with Don Baylor. Oh. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Don Baylor wasn't having any part of mixing with people at all. In which case, I would leave Don Baylor alone. Well, when I looked at those arms on him, I said to myself, <laughs> I'm not messing yeah. with you. But, uh, but however Jim you want it, Don. Jim Rice was the nicest was he? guy. Talk baseball. He was friendly. No kidding. Uh, yeah. That's uh, good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of respect for him. Because when he played, he had the reputation of being a little surly. Oh, a lot right? surly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he sure did. Uh, and, you know, uh, I asked him if he played football as a kid. I said, you, man, the build yeah. you got, you could have been one hell of a football player. He said, I loved playing football. He <laughs> says, South baseball's Carolina, great. Right? Yeah. yeah. He says, baseball's great. But in football, you get to hit people. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, shoulders like this. Never lifted a weight in his life. Is that right? Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow was right. Uh, I loved watching him hit. I really did. Uh, yeah. He was one of those guys that yep. you just, you, even the game was over and Rice was coming up, you'd wait to see Rice yep. hit. Yep. If you were at the park in the eighth, ninth innings, Rice would hit and then you'd see all these people leave. Yeah, that's you know? it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, see you later, he's done. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> uh, but when he was young, that ball just exploded jumped, off jumped his, off bat. his bat. Yeah. yeah. Um, umpires, their competence and accuracy. I think the baseball umpires do the best job of any of the four major sport yeah. officials. Uh, but they also go to appear in the, the other column, too. Well, they have the easiest job of the four, I think. Yeah, but you know, they get the balls and strikes right, I would guess, I don't know, 94, 95% of the time? Yeah. Yeah, and then the, when they miss, they just miss by a tad. Right. It's, it's what gets your butt sometimes, this guy like Joe West, been around for a skillion years. Yeah. You give him some grief, and the ball is this far outside, and he starts calling right. it a strike to put you in your place, you know? I don't really think that that's a great I don't like that either. Um, the game itself, I love baseball. It's like a, watching a beautiful picture being painted. <laughs> you know, you sit back, yep. and it's not frenetic activity where you're going to have five eyes to see the game and all that. No clock. Yeah, no clock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the replay system, such as it is, is all right as it is. I don't like them going down and looking for four minutes trying to figure out whether the ball landed on the chalk <laughs> or not, you know. But uh, Nesson, all games are televised. That's great. And the player development, the farm system, the Red Sox done a pretty good job years, through the years with their farm system. Lean years sometimes, fat years other times, like this year. Yeah, yeah. looks good. Yeah. Now, um, things I hate about the Red Sox. Okay. Fenway Park. Love it and hate it. Yep, both. It's uncomfortable. The seats are tiny. Yep. They're at a rotten angle. A lot of marks. Uh, yeah. And you get a lot of obstruction. Now, especially those poor people that get them behind the posts. Right. Man alive. They'd be a, I tell you what, those tickets should be free. Yeah. Man. Buy two. Buy yep. one, get another game free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Red Sox front office. Sometimes they drive me nuts. I mean, Tom Warner. I mean, oh, he's yeah. a television guy. Larry Lucchino. Larry. He's an inner city tough guy with a chip on his shoulder. And John Henry, I don't know. Every time I see him, I think of Lost in Space. <laughs> Out there someplace. Yeah, he is. They say that he can do the most complex math problems in his head. And when he was running that. hedge funds... Uh, he would do all this in his head, and he'd beat the guys with the computers. <clears throat> yeah. I was never interested in that stuff. No, no. No. Quantitative analysis. Uh, no, no. Uh, big Poppy, out of shape again. Looks a little heavy. Well, I, he actually looks at me like he lost a couple of pounds, but... <laughs> I think he did it by dieting. I don't think he did it by working out because he hurts all over. Well, uh, that's yeah. the latest excuse. Uh, he's got a lot of He wanted a week off. Yeah. It's been hot. Dehydrated. We have, we have a lot of pity for that hot weather they've been enduring down yeah, there. Yeah, they don't have it in the Dominican where he yeah. went his distance. They don't have six feet of snow there. on the ground. Yeah. And, yeah. Ah, uh, just we feel, another. We feel this pain. Uh, yeah. From Big yeah. Poppy. Yeah. They've babied him the whole time he's been here. But he can hit but the ball. But he produces. He can hit the so ball. So we put up with it. Yeah. What really gets me, though, is his, this business about jogging to first base. You know, uh, not running the ball out. Ah. Yeah, that, that's been around as long as I've been watching baseball. Yep. Mixed approach. Spend huge dollars, yet they don't pursue an ace. Right. Not yet. That's a little convoluted, seems to me. I'm okay with what they're doing, assuming that they're going to get an ace. Okay, now that I think it will be because you've got the group of five that are coming to free agency at the end of the upcoming season. Mm -hmm. So those guys 
could be had during the season. It depends, and on, depends on how the team is doing, whoever uh, right. is the furthest out of it, uh, the right. soonest. Uh, and that's the problem. The one I'd like to see them get is Jordan Zimmerman, but to Cole your point, ha Cole Hamels they may very well be in. Be. Cole Hamels will be available. Yeah, he's well, he's available now. The others aren't necessarily available now. but Right. Um, I like Cole Hamels. He wouldn't be my first choice. Out would of not be my first choice either because... Um, well, We're talking, you know what happened to Cliff Lee here during spring yeah. training? Uh, but you're talking about a group that includes David Price, Johnny Cueto. Yeah, Johnny Cueto is going, you're going to have to uh, sell a whole bunch of property yeah. and come up with a whole bunch of cash for that lad because he's not going to come cheap. No, but... But then again... What if he's 9 and 11 in midseason? Right. I mean, that stuff happens too, you know. Yeah, what if he gets hurt? I mean, there's a lot oh, of variables. Oh, mamma mia. Yeah. Well, then you don't go after him. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I'm okay with it. I think they'll pick something up. They'll pick one of those five guys up during the year. Okay, so we're not going to get Hamels uh, at the end of spring training? I don't think so. Okay. Um, pitching coach Juan Nieves constantly spitting tobacco juice. Every time you see him, he... Well, if you chew, that's what you got to do. Yeah, I know that, but this is not good for the youth of America. <laughs> not good for the old people of America, either. Well, the good news on that point is I know very few youth today who identify Juan Nieves as a, as a role model. Yeah, so. well, there's a lot to be said there. <laughs> John Henry owning the Globe and having the newspaper guests that appear on the pregame and postgame shows all be Globe reporters. Do you know that there is no one from the Herald that has ever been on the Red Sox postgame or pregame show? Really? Yeah. Now Buckley, no. No, Buckley's he's banned huh. for some reason. But by the way, he used to be on. And so didn't um, uh, Sullivan. Um, Sullivan? Sullivan. No, not Sullivan. Who's Silverman? The, uh, no, the Irish guy. Uh, this on in the morning with uh, John um, Callahan. 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 Callahan Sullivan. Um, he was on a couple of times, but in the last five years, nobody. Just Globe guys. Hmm. Uh, I hadn't realized and, that. And, and a couple of bloggers. Uh, but it's mostly um, huh. uh, ninety-three point seven guys are uh, uh, are uh, are globe guys. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, but there's other talent out there, but they don't tap into it. You know. Uh, anyway. Um, okay. I love Jerry Remy, but he'll start to criticize, and all of a sudden he'll. Pullback, and that's you think because the little buzzer goes off in his ear. Or? Well, I think exactly. He's also <laughs> saying, "Yeah, now see restaurants. I have yeah. restaurants here, and I have bars here at Fenway Park, and I'm a living legend. I better shut up." Yeah, he's part of the whole. He is. Not only entourage. is he taking a uh, a paycheck from the Red Sox. He's invested heavily in the Red Sox with his restaurants. Their success is good for him. And their success is very good for him. Yeah. And Jerry will say a few things, but you can see him mm, shutting it down. You know, almost like, well, I've said too much. Yeah. Um, and in fairness, I think he has a great sense of loyalty to John Henry, because John Henry really stood behind him yep. with the issues with his son. Absolutely. You, Absolutely. You know. And also his, uh, his problems, uh, emotional problems that he right. had, his cancer. Yeah. Uh, the Red Sox have been very they've good been, to him. They've really stood They really on, have yeah. been. They've been very, very loyal to him. Now, Remy is also pretty good uh, entertainment for the Red sure. Sox, too. It's a two-way street. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's another. This problem, my number one complaint. The politicians get super special hospitality and tickets for playoff games and World Series. John Kerry wouldn't know a baseball bat from a pipe organ, and yet he's in a box seat. 
Just like he's sitting next to Bob Kraft in his in his box. Oh, I know what that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, right? what, what are they doing out there, Bob? Yeah. yeah. And you look yeah. up and there's Kerry sitting yeah. next to Kraft. Yeah. Now, Bob, uh, they dropped the puck at center field. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, they still have leather helmets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Umpires, I love them, and now it's the other side who want to be part of the story. They gotta act it up. They gotta, you know, I'm surprised some of them don't throw their arm off mm. run, ringing some of these guys up on a third strike. And they all have their own yeah. little shtick the way they do it. Joe West, mm. you mentioned him earlier. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just call it a third strike. You never mind trying to show the guy up, for heaven's sakes. Um, the new speed up in the 15 second clock yeah. that is coming is something I'm gonna hate. Yeah, I don't like the idea of a clock. Nope, nope. More replays are coming. But now here's, oh, and the cost of tickets and the availability, there's no parking in there at all, but I don't go in there anymore. Right at 72 Main Street. Yeah. Right on the old Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> Front row seat. That's yeah. it. Uh, yeah, with high def now, honestly, you see it, it better at yeah. home, don't you? Oh yeah. You, you have a better you feeling do. of what happened. You do. I'm comfortable on the couch. Yeah. Uh, snacks in the ice box. It w doesn't get any better than that. And I don't have to stand in line to go to the bathroom. Yeah. It's mighty good. I miss those $9 beers, though, you know. <laughs> $9 draft beers. <laughs> Boy. And you know what? I swear to you, uh, the last time I was in there, well, it was quite a few years ago, probably 10 or 11 or 12. They had, uh, they'd gone over to Bud and Bud Light. I swear the Bud was Bud Light. I heard somebody else say that, too. Yeah, it was. They even watered. expressed the concern that it was watered down somehow. Yeah, well, I, I think it was, because I think that's, that's their way of not only restricting you to two beers, we're also uh, calming you down a little bit with a lot less horsepower in them. Right, right. And getting you to buy a couple more. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, they know what they're doing. You think? All right, here's the last hate. Okay. And this one I think we'll probably sink our teeth into. Explain to me the controversy over the shift. Well, it sounds to me like a big to-do about nothing. Well said. Quite frankly. And, uh, you know, people like David Ortiz constantly whining. Look, he whines about, about everything. You know, I mean, if you listen to Ortiz, you'd think he was, without the shift, he'd be a 400 hitter. Yeah. Listen, um, he whines when a pigeon flies overhead when he's batting, you know? Right. Uh, but it, it, this sort of like is sort of like Belichick and his formation. Yeah. So we got to penalize him because he's smarter than we are. Right. Yeah. Buck Showalter, well, we got to penalize him because he's smarter than we are the way he ranges his infielders. Right. Yeah. So if they can outsmart us, well, we can't have that. Got to be a you level know, playing field. Even the dullards are going to be able to figure it out. When I was a kid and I played baseball, we were always coached to hit the ball the other way, to move the runner, et cetera. Don't just you know be a pull hitter. Don't just try to hit it, hit a home run every time. I've tried to hit it up the middle. Try to hit it the other way if that's if that's where the pitch is. That's all Ortiz needs to do. If he could go up and hit three or four ground balls to short, that just go bouncing into left field. He get ruined by George Scott and the Taters. Yeah. Yeah. Swing from your butt and, and try I know, to put it out. I know his power is pulling. Yep. But you know he, he could hit. He could, you know, seriously, he could probably hit 325, 330, 335, go to left. Right. That's all. Right. I mean, how hot is this? And then when you get a pitch to drive, just let then it drive let it loose. It. Sure. Well, when they're pitching you outside and the third base, well, the third baseman goes to the other side, the shortstop is over by second base. Yeah. You should be able to come up with a hit. Yeah, spray it the other way. Yep. I, uh, I just don't understand it. I hope, like hell, they don't do anything about you restricting. Know, if, they, if they had ever tried to shift on Wade Boggs, he would have hit 500. Oh, 500, 600, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. 
here's another guy. Uh, he's a funny guy to me. Uh, very friendly. Wade Box? Yeah. Oh, happy you, guy. Yeah, good, you, good, good guy. That's where he was. Uh, yeah. You know, you were down at the Legion Hall having a couple of beers with him. Yeah. Just, just a regular person. And I always liked uh, meeting him down there, uh, down at Pawtucket. Now I got a few remarks. Koji Uehara in his hamstring. Yeah. Kelly Take in his tight bicep. Mm -hmm. Christian Vasquez in his sore elbow. Big Poppy has soreness all over, general soreness. Uh, this looks like we may have to juggle a few things here at the start of the season. At the start, yeah. I find Uihara disconcerting. Uh, there's a double double subject here. Um, he finished up last year and he admitted he had arm trouble. Mm -hmm. um, he had a, a day or two in spring training where he didn't feel right throwing the ball. Uh, now he's got a hamstring problem. Um, is That's this what happens when you're 40 when years When you're old. 40 years old, yeah. yeah. Which is why I was very nervous about that 2 in 18 mil. Uh, but if he's right, he's almost unhittable. Right. But um, to uh, get to another point I have down here, the surgeons are book solid doing Tommy John surgery. <laughs> yeah. But yet, over in Japan, there's none of it. Because they pitch, they, they long throw, uh, just about every day, and uh, they pitch every sixth day. Right. And, and it's, there may be something to it. Yeah, yeah. I, think the, I think there is something to it, yeah. yeah. And they get smaller frames, too, and they're not big, muscle-bound ox. Yeah. And I think there's something to that, too. There may be, and I don't know, if, you know, you, you think of guys like Clemens who get so much power from their legs and their hips. Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver, Oof. Bob Gibson. All those guys are just, the power came from the midsection and the hips. And, and you don't seem to get that with those guys. It's no, you more don't. Motion arm. Yep. Yep. And you know, I was, uh, there's a, a school of thought in football. And I read it, uh, some esoteric piece in Sports Illustrated or someplace. I don't know where the hell I read it. But it said that the lineman, uh, the 350 pound. <clears throat> Uh, variety. There's some thinking that the league would be better served all the way around with 280 pounders that are 6'6 six, six, and that have lean muscles rather than these huge things in the huge gut. Um, and uh, I wonder if uh, that's the direction Belichick is starting to go in. I don't know. It depends on the position, I think. I think, yeah. You know, it's hard, it's hard to line a 280-pound lineman up against a 360-pound nose tackle. Yeah. You know, it's just you're giving away an awful lot. Mm -hmm. there. Yep. Yep. Um, I agree. Uh, but I think, that, I think that's going to be a trend in the league. Could be. Could be. I don't know. Um, I guess Vince is in trouble, huh? I, uh, Vince? <laughs> well, then, you know, there's another contract. Yeah. Um, two years... Nine mil? Uh, I think that's what it was, yeah. So, yeah, I think it was four and a half mil. Four for one year, five the other? Yeah. Yeah, that something like right. that. Yeah. 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 Now, the Patriots had wanted him. They could have afforded $4 million. Especially after Revis. But left. if he was yeah. willing to settle for four this year and five the next, and you know damn right well that's not guaranteed. Only the four is guaranteed. Right. Um, if the Patriots had wanted him, it would seem to me they would have been a pretty simple chore signing him. Yeah, I think so. Um, but that's so not what they do again. Yeah. They move on a yeah. year early rather than a year late. Yeah. So and it works. Tough to argue with him. It is. Mookie Betts. Ah, love the kid. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. Is <clears throat> he... Quite the lad. He looks like the real deal. You know, I was a little concerned that last year was just, you know, a flash in the pan. Yeah. But he, uh, here's, he, a, here's a skinny little out, uh, infielder. We stuck him out in the outfield, and he didn't do anything wrong. So you say to yourself, well. Right. But 
now down in spring training, he's the star of the show. Star of the show, leadoff hitter, which we yeah. desperately need a leadoff yep. hitter. Yep. Um, the new Hanley Romero. Yeah. Um, Mr. Friendly. Mr. Get Along with Everybody. Yeah. Now, is it possible he's grown up? I think is so. Is it possible he's really, got to a he much better to situation? Here. Is yeah, it? well, he's sitting in a lineup like he hasn't hit in for a while. Well, the Dodger lineup wasn't bad, but... Is, is it really? Does Poppy really do magic with these kids? Maybe. Although Hanley's not a kid anymore, but... Yeah, it's spring training, though, you know? I mean, he signed a four-year, $88 million contract. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. First three weeks are good. Yep. We've got a long way to go. Long way to go. But yeah. so far... So far, so he's good. He's done everything right. Yeah. And he said, yep, well, bring me out there and show me how to play left field. And happy I'll, to do it. And I'll be happy to happy do, to do it. it. Absolutely. Yeah. For $22 he, million, I'm then happy to do luck, it. Only four <laughs> a, a game will come out here. Yeah. How bad can I mess it up? Uh, any of our young pitchers ready to make the jump? Much ballyhooed. And by me, when I said to you that staff down to Pawtucket's going to be the best staff in right. any minor league yeah. city. And um, I agree with that. Yep. Uh, I don't know that they're ready in April. Are we going to see them, a couple of them this year? Absolutely. Yeah. I think we are going to see a couple Absolutely. of them this year. But there is one that is ready. And they can't wait to send him down again. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright, yeah. <sighs> I, I was reading something about him actually just yesterday, about how well he's... His command of the knuckleball yeah. is just uh, really impressive. You know, knuckleball has developed late. Right. Look at Wakefield. Wakefield, I mean, yeah. uh, and... Uh, Hoyt Wilhelm. I, Hoyt Wilhelm. Um, Wilbur Wood. Wilbur Tried to be Wood. a fastball pitcher first. Didn't yeah. quite work out. He didn't have a fastball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, That's so, uh, in, um, uh, up in Toronto, um, Dickie. Dickie, yeah. I mean, he's what, 38 and 9? Yeah. Uh, there's not as much strain thrown on knuckleball. You don't see too many Tommy John surgeries on knuckleballers. Uh, and uh, Wright's th 29 or 30. Uh, and they're talking about sending him down and keeping him stretched out. Yeah. And, uh, that's a bum deal. Uh, but anyway. Well, we'll see what happens. If Kelly's not ready, he'll be up. Yeah. You know, I don't think they want to bring Owens up yet. No, they and, already sent Rodriguez down. And Matt Barnes uh, had like three three great uh, appearances and then three bad ones, or yeah. three mediocre ones. Talking about him in the bullpen, now. Yeah, ninety-seven miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Red Sox Cuban strategy: pay now and invest in them as they develop, versus overpaying for older players. As long as you pick well and you're lucky, yeah, I think that's a good strategy. Yeah. We'll see how it works out. Yeah. They, Victorino will only bat right. Feels twinge when he hits left. Yeah. Only 193 this spring. Yeah. He'll be tough to trade at $13 million. Craig at 273 is not burning it up either. Nava will probably have to be traded. And Jackie Bradley, the ugly stepchild, is going to end up in Pawtucket. Yeah, and all he has done is led the... Uh, uh, let's see. Well, he was 333 here, but that was a few games ago. He's around 360 said, or 370. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He went two for two yesterday, I think. I mean... I love Jackie Bradley, too. That defense he plays is just You know, I wonder what Jackie Bradley's going to have to do. To, well, of course, we had him up here before. We had him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. We went and got the bust and everything, and yep. then he went bust. But uh, as one of your five outfielders... On your team. I like him. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what he's going to have to do, I think, is he's going to have to wait for them to trade a couple of these guys. going to have to. Or until, or, or until some Victorino more. ends up yeah. in the disabled list, which yeah. he will. Well, I mean, parts will fall he off him. Yeah. The arms yeah. will fall off or something. So and, uh, they'll trade Craig, I'm, because I think he's got the most value yeah. um, of the bunch. But Castillo's got to play. I know the Braves have been expressing interest in Bradley. I hope they don't trade him. Yeah. But, but they, they might. And John Lester has not appeared in a spring game yet. He has a dead arm. 
gee, do you suppose the folks out in Chicago are enjoying that yeah. news report? <laughs> I think he's had that before, though, hasn't he? A lot of pitches. A lot of pitches, too. Yeah. yeah. They, they uh, go to spring training, they do their workouts, and then they develop a dead arm. And they right. have to work their way through it. Some sort of a phenomena that I don't understand. Um, so that's anyway my Red Sox thoughts. You know what? Before we move on, yes. I think we really need to share with our viewers that the official stationery of the Bill Crane Sports <laughs> Show is I love my cat stationery. So <laughs> I, I just wanted to make put that on the record. I, and it's, because it and touches my heart. And it's well on the record. <laughs> Let me tell you. I bought about 10 packs of these things at Ocean State Job Lot. And you know why? Because they made a mistake and they put the seal here <laughs> rather than up here. Top, so. Oh, so you get to tear it off like this. Yeah, no problem. So they were selling them like 10 for $1.99. So do you actually have a cat? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do. Harvey. There you go. Harvey the cat. Harvey the oh, cat. Oh, yeah, he's a pep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's uh, about 16 and a half pounds. Really? Yep. Is he a mouser? Oh, yeah. And oh. he's muscular. Right. I don't know. Right. What, so I a don't working know. cat. You like, gotta like that. Yeah, I'll, he's an outdoor cat. Oh, nice. And you can pat him, and he purrs so loud, and then all of a sudden he gets tired of it and he bites you. <laughs> uh, that was oh, one yeah, right that's there. That's a good one. Yeah. Right there, yeah. Yeah, that's sort of healing over, but I take blood thinners. So I was going to say, that looks like a bladder. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> heal over. Oh, that blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a pip. Um, anyway, the Bruins, uh, you know, we're going to. I'm afraid we're going to come to a screeching halt oh, here very man. shortly. Oh. But one thing here that I would like to share, uh, share with you is uh, the Bruins, Todd uh, Marchand, 22 goals. Yeah, having a good year. One Berge, of the, one of the few. 21. Right. And Erickson, 18. Yeah. Erickson has kind of rebounded he into got, a useful hockey player. He got a bunch of goals there in a couple, yeah. three weeks. Yeah. got a handful. But the... Folks that we sent packing, Sagan has 33. Kessel has 24. Aginla has 24. Blake Wheeler has 23. Wow, we Blake Wheeler, huh? Yeah, we couldn't figure where to play him. Yeah. Uh, Benoit Poulier couldn't run him out of town fast enough. He has 16. And Brad Boyce. Is <clears throat> well, he's older than you and I combined. Yeah, <laughs> and he's got 12 goals. He's got 12 goals down for Florida, 12 goals Holy and natural. 19 assists. And guess what? Plus nine. No kidding. Yeah, well, if you're on a power play, that would help. Now, um, we have um, interesting defensemen, too. Uh, we have who do you suppose leads the Bruins in plus minus? Who leads the Bruins in plus minus? Yeah, you're trying to sneak a peek, aren't you? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, on a whim, I'm going to say Tory Krug. Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller. Plus twenty. No kidding. Krug is plus thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, Chara is minus two. McQuaid is one. Sides is zero. Wow. Um, over. In the uh, cast-off pile, we have uh, Dennis Weidman, 13 yeah. goals and 34 assists. Johnny Boychuk, 7 goals, 25 assists, and he's a plus 12. Hmm. Mark Stewart, who Mark it broke Stewart. my heart. Yeah. He, he played harder than anybody on that team. Tough guy. He dropped the gloves. He's 2-12, two, uh, 2 goals, 12 assists. But he's a plus five. Plus five. Yeah. Now, I have one more thing I want to talk about about the Bruins. Now, correct me if I'm mistaken here, but didn't we draft a goalie number one three years ago? Yes, so? we did. Yeah, Malcolm, Malcolm uh, Subban. Subban. Yeah. Yeah, very athletic. And everybody said, oh, mother, you got him at the end of the first round. What a steal. Hmm. The best goalie in the draft. Yeah, that year, absolutely. Uh, he's played in the grand total of 31 games as of yesterday down in Providence. Somebody else has played in 40. Now, 
is this how you bring your number one goalie to be along? Or is this how you grow wow. him to be traded? He's 14, 12, and four down there. 14 wins, 12 losses, four draws, uh, ties, shootouts, whatever the hell they call them these days. 2.47, and that's 21st in the AHL. 21st. And he's got a 921. I didn't bother to figure out what that was, but it's not near the top. Yeah. Um, I really felt when they drafted Subban that if they played their cards right, they could trade him for a couple of number ones. Mm -hmm. If this kid was going to develop the way he That's was. That's the plan, I now, think. Now, what do you suppose we get from now? Probably a 36-year-old defenseman? Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, has the... Has the luster really come off him? Well, or, here's the thing. Are people going to look at him and say, you know, change of scenery? No, that could be. back to being but, but, on the path. But they brought him up for one game, stuck him out there, he and got bombed in the ankle. Oh, my yank gosh. Him. He was terrible. I mean, Poor that's kid. not fair to the no. kid. I mean, golly. I know that um, and they you know, don't want to play kids because they don't trust them. I was convinced, too, that they were going to play him the game before against Edmonton. I know. Not, why I didn't know he start against it. Edmonton? I don't know. Which is not a good team. Instead, no. he started against... Uh, I think Claude thought that that was a slam dunk win, and he was going to go with Rask to make sure, make they, sure got they got the, the, win? Two, the two points out of it. I don't That's a team know. to start the kid with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you, we're... Heading towards the last roundup here. We just yeah. got the signal. So uh, I've got the Bruins all graded out here, A, B, C, D, as far as the players oh, are concerned. Report card time, huh? And uh, I've got it all out. And I also did some research on Mike Keenan. Because what happened with Keenan is that um, he was very successful, very successful coach. But he burned his bridges every place he was because he was a sarcastic slave yeah. driver. Yeah. All right. I think that there's a lot of the ballad of Mike uh, Keenan being sung around Boston Garden because I think they've tuned Julian out. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I think on our next visit, maybe we'll start off with the Bruins. And really quickly, do they make the playoffs? No. No. That's right. That's the correct answer. They're not going to make the playoffs. Yeah. No, I don't think so either. But I'll tell you what. Disappointing. Uh, for our next uh, show, folks, we will lay the Bruins carcass right here. We'll pick all the meat off the bones for you. Okay. What a deal. Hey, listen, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed um, uh, our little uh, chat. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Great. Great. Gary? Thanks, Bill. Thanks, bud. Always a pleasure. Good night, folks. Night.